Hey, this is Kirk Fletcher, and this is Premier Guitars Big Five. My favorite guitar happens to be this Gibson ES345 that was made for me in the Gibson Custom Shop. You know, the team with my good dear friend, Matt Kohler, put this guitar together for me, and it's only maybe a year or so old. And it's basically like a 59 345, but it has an ebony fingerboard on it. And then the blonde, you know, I mean, just, it's the ultimate bling guitar. <laughs> so, and it's called, affectionately called after my dear mother who is no longer with us, Ochery. I chose the ebony fingerboard more for tone. It's sort of like a, more of a snappy, brighter kind of thing, you know, and that really lends itself to like more rhythmic, funky kind of stuff. So I was kind of trying to maybe get a little bit of that like snappy thing like you might find on an L5 or something like that, a 355. I'm a born tweaker. I'm from uh, <laughs> Los Angeles, California. And you know, that's the home of guys messing with their guitars all the time, you know. So the different things on this guitar is like, uh, I changed the pickups to um, like early 70s humbuckers, just stock. I bought them, I done the reverb. <laughs> <laughs> I done the reverb, you know, deep hole on that. From about 1964, five, all the way to like 1974, I'm good. I'm fine. I mean, I've owned like probably five or six 335s with, you know, from the mid to late 60s, because I can't afford anything earlier, really, you know. I mean, I will someday but not right now, <laughs> so I'm good. They sound like just humbuckers, they're clear, they sound good, and they're very consistent to me from like the mid 60s, you know, to early 70s, they're really consistent. And I disable the Variatone on there, like I've done with old 345s, you know, I don't see the point. I do when I'm thinking about it and it looks good on paper and you think about BB King and all that, but then when you get down to it, I'm like, I don't need this on here. What's my Desert Island album? Oh my God, that is such a loaded question. And it's so fun because it changes from day to day what my Desert Island um, album is. But I would say that I'm a person who is really drawn to blues, like hardcore blues, traditional, just, you know, the real traditional blues, as well as like gospel music and singers and fantastic singers, as well as this West Coast sort of like 70s music like Joni Mitchell and like the players that play with Joni Mitchell like Robin Ford, Larry Carlton, all of these guys, you know, and I love that so much. So my style is really an amalgamation of um, these two worlds sort of. So the record that I often go back to, there are many, but I often go back to this record by Bobby Blue Bland called Dreamer. This record is the perfect marriage of like the west coast studio beautiful musicians you know that play and played on countless songs that we've all heard you know as well as this blues singer my favorite blues singer bobby bland so you get this marriage of that beautiful west coast thing and then the blues on the top of it what's my biggest guitar culture pet peeve oh man i have eight million of them <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, this is so annoying, but I totally understand it because we're living in that kind of world. Like, okay, um, you hear a guitar player that you really like, and then there are people that just go, okay, can you give me a lesson? <laughs> can you give me a guitar lesson, <laughs> you know? And it's like, man, so you want me in an hour's time to try and, you know, teach you what it took some myself and a bunch of my buddies like a lifetime to try and achieve you know and I think the things that would get the player there faster would not be anything that I might play right now it might be hey you need to 
totally submerge yourself in this record, in these records, this style, this whole, you know, just really dig deep into the music and things like that. The other pet peeve is like playing the guitar and you hear a player and he gets a great tone and you like that tone. And like, you immediately go, okay, what kind of pickups do you have? <laughs> What kind of amp is he playing through? What, what's going on? What kind of strings fix everything? You know, and I'm like, oh, it's not about that at all. This instrument inspires you to play it. Guitar, certain guitars inspire you more than others. But still, you know, you're not going to sound probably exactly like that with it because you're a different person. You know, many different things, the way you pick or vibrato and everything. So, you know. I think people need to dig more into the music than, you know, trying to find a quick remedy. Which um, of my guitar heroes would shock fans? Just off the top of my head, just thinking maybe Alan Holdsworth. I have this whole thing. I'm a nerd for like 70s fusion music and like all that kind of stuff. And I don't do any of that in my own playing at all. But, you know, people like Alan Holdsworth, I don't look at them really as guitar players. First of all, they're are they from this earth? No, <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, Alan Holsworth, I look at him as a musician. It just so happened that he played guitar. I mean, because he was like, created the whole thing. The first Alan Holsworth uh, cassette tape I heard was Secrets. And then I heard um, I.O.U. And then, um, what's the one where he's on the front cover with the synth axe? I always forget how to pronounce that. It looks like the Jetsons or something. I heard that too, you know? So like, oh man, that's like my childhood. What's my secret weapon? Well, I definitely don't have that many, <laughs> but being able to turn on that soul button at any time, to being, being able to interject that into whatever I'm doing and be able to just grab and draw from my influences like gospel influences and funk and all of these different things, being able to grab a hold to that. I think that's in the way also that I look at music. I'm trying to not think about the guitar, but what can I do to make the music sound better? You know, think like an arranger, think about, you know, special little guitar parts that they're gonna miss it if it's not there anymore, you know? It just depends, you know, when I hear a piece of music or whatever, what can I do to make that, you know, like make you bob your head, you know, or get into it on like a groove level and things like that. And sometimes I think that's a little overlooked in the guitar community.